Andrew Dix. Good morning, welcome um, to this episode. Um, this one's called Deceased Estate. Um, for Christmas I got a box of coins from my partner um, as a Christmas present. And being an avid coin collector, um, I'm just going to run through what I've got today. Um, I just wanted to say in some of my previous videos, when I actually first started out metal detecting... <laughs> Um, I wasn't using um, a trowel or a pinpointer, which I do have now, um, and I actually copped a bit of fire for some of the plugs that I dug, um, and that was a big learning curve for me. Um, in my defence, um, the plugs were all done on permissions, um, and they were all put back how they how they were. So. Um, <laughs> But I've learned a lot now, much more about metal detecting and how to dig proper plugs. So it's really important that you do dig proper plugs, um, use a mat to put the dirt on and the over, overfill and put the plug in correctly. You could even go to the point of actually putting some water up down on the plug afterwards to help it regrow. Um, but in saying that, there's still people in uh, metal detecting Aotearoa who are digging pl plugs in summertime so I think it's a little bit of give and take because you can dig a, dig a nice plug, put it all back together and if it doesn't rain in a couple of days that plug will actually die so um, something sort of to be said it's a bit of a gentleman's agreement that, you, that we don't do it but um, I think the lure of metal detecting and the bug is so strong that people will do it anyway um, so for now I'm pretty much sticking to beaches and um, I haven't been able to get out for a while because I have a, a young daughter a little baby and she's pretty full on it's pretty much a full-time job but anyway I'm gonna show you what I've been gifted and um, I'm gonna be looking after this gentleman's coins and adding them to my collection so I hope you enjoy so this is the collection um, I was gifted from a deceased gentleman. Um, it was his collection throughout the 60s and 70s. Um, there was a man, John Bertrand, who, um, as far as I know, he set out a bit of a he made a bit of a club where you could buy coins weekly, monthly, and that, and get all these books and stuff to go go with it. Um, so these are the individual ones and cases. Um, <coughs> So this is the commemorative dollar, um, 1967, um, beautiful sort of coat of arms, um, Southern Cross, a few other bits and pieces. Um, this one is the Duke of Edinburgh um, award, uh, sorry, I'll flip it up the right way, Mount Cook, New Zealand, one dollar, very big coin. Australia's first one dollar coin. Um, you've probably seen the old Australian one dollar coin, kangaroos, Sydney Harbour Bridge. This is the old um, paper money New Zealand one dollar note. Um, this is, I think, this was around early late eighties, early nineties, and then they got rid of it. Um, I got a bag of one cent coins. You've probably seen before. Bag of two cent coins. Um, coming back, I got a Waitangi Day one dollar. Um, this one's quite cool. One of my favourites. It's a British Commonwealth Games, New Zealand, uh, 1974. Uh, this one is the one dollar Cook's chart. Commemorative dollar. Sorry, just carrying on. Um, commemorative dollar, New Zealand Day, one dollar. Big coins. Um, we've got these books with um, 1971 coin issues. They've got this random mould on them, 2050s, that commemorative dollar. That's the ones and two cent coins in the bags I didn't show you. Um, pretty much the same again. The Mount Cook, 50s, 20s, 10s. All those are untouched. They're... Um, Never been um, touched by hands. Got a couple more here. Commemorative dollar, blah, blah, blah. They do seem to have some mould on them. But anyway, so they. this is a very nice set. Um, 
see how shiny these bad boys are. So this is the old New Zealand money. Um, here's another one. Um, boom, boom, boom. Just going to try and rattle through these quickly. Oh shit, should have been a bit more organised. <laughs> yeah, some nice coins in there. Um, blah, blah. We'll get to this one. 50s, 20s, 10, 5, 1, and 2. Commemorative dollar. Got a few of those. Um, some loose coins that were in the collection. So we've got English pennies, half pennies, nothing really old. 19. 1907 Australian two dollar coin English one penny and then there's the New Zealand pennies a few of those uh, What was quite cool is it's had some half crowns to 1950s and this stonker here 1934 50% uh, silver also some of the uh, um, yeah, the old New Zealand money 20s um, That's an Australian 20 if you're a Kiwi, you would have seen all this kind of money before. The tens, they're all quite big. But notably, the old 50 cent coin, very big coin. Um, two 50 cent coins weigh an ounce. Um, there's a bit of weight to them. And you can see, like, if you had a pocket full of this money, it gets really heavy. For, you know, you've only got a few dollars worth. That's another interesting coin. Um, the 1967 10 cent coin. He actually had the one shilling on the bottom of it as well, bottom of the uh, ticky. Um, but really coming to the meat and potatoes of this collection, um, is these coins here, um, these books here, three pences, pennies, six pences, florins. These are the half pennies. Um, I think these are bronze. But yeah, it's got every single year in the set. Um, and even a few varieties, English, South African. Um, the Florence, one of my favourite um, Kiwi coins, Florin. So every year from 1933 to 66, up until 1946, these are all 50% silver. And then following that, um, they're a mix. Um, they're not silver, um, copper, nickel, stuff like that. It also has the mintages there as well. So, um, uh, what's a good mintage? Do, do, do. 1944, 140,000, quite low mintage. And the 1942, apparently, 150,000, low mintage. Um, so these have been touched. Um, they've just been popped in this collection. Um, so these are all New Zealand um, predecimals. Just open that up. Again, the sixpence, which has got the little bird on it. Um, quite nice. All the ones there. Um, pennies. This book actually fell apart. But I'm going to try and see if I can get someone to fix that. Pennies, so they're the New Zealand ones. I think they're the Tui, I'm not 100% sure on that. Nothing really too special, big um, big circulation numbers of them, so quite common quite common to find in parks that are undetected, the penny. And my favourite, one of my favourite coins, and the New Zealand three pence. So I found the most of these metal detecting, uh, not this section, but... Um, little um, mouldy patu and that's the full collection but the 1935 is missing the reason 40,000 minted probably New Zealand's most famous um, coin and I'm yet to find one and I might potentially actually just buy one um, you're looking about 160 to 200 $240 to buy one. Um, back in the 1960s or 70s when this guy had this collection, um, he's written, sorry, cost price, 25 bucks, And $25 would have been a lot of money back in the 60s and 70s. And can, it, you can see why he didn't buy it for the collection. I'm absolutely gutted when I opened this up and he didn't have it. Um, but yeah, you can see all the other mintages, 6, 6 million, 2.8 million, 3 million. Yeah. 
Um, these commonly wash up on beaches because they're so small. But yeah, the 1935. So I'm hoping to get that coin, either to detect it or I eventually I might just purchase it um, and it'll finish off all these sets. So um, yeah, that's the collection I got. Pretty awesome. Got a few stamps as well. Um, pretty happy with it. And um, once um, we get set up with our new house, um, I'm going to make two display tables, one with my current coin collection and one with all my metal detecting finds. <laughs> which is a massive amount of stuff. Um, I've got stuff here at this house and I've got stuff in storage. So, yeah, hopefully to be able to get out metal detecting soon and, um, and um, find some more goodies. So thank you and Happy New Year to you all. Cheers. Bye.